Welcome back to Absolutely Marvel and DC. My name is Benny, that is Dan, and we get together on a regular basis to talk about some of your favorite movies and TV shows from rumors, uh, discussions, overall. We just do a lot here on a daily basis, so why don't you subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell, and join the Absolute Armada today. Today is not a comic book themed thing, but you would think so, and technically Halo does have comics. Oh, does it? It does, in a lot oh. of novels, and I've read the comics. And they're all, I've read okay. the novels. <laughs> Which is weird because I don't read. Uh, <laughs> you, he doesn't even like. I have to like verbally tell him things. Like I'm typing in a Discord. And he's got the verbal reader back. Like Dan, make sure you bring coffee. Like <laughs> I, I have read about uh, six novels, and two of them were the Halo ones. <laughs> and I only so, finished half of one of them. We thought it'd be fun to do a Halo episode here, and if you guys like us reviewing the individual episodes, we could do this on a weekly thing. But unlike what happened with Squid Game, where we took eight weeks to get to it, <laughs> and unlike what happened with Vox Machina, where by and the Arcane. time we watched it all, <laughs> and Arcane, by the time we watched it, it was three weeks after it aired, we are on top of Halo for once. We are yes. we were like, okay, we, we messed it up on Vox Machina, we messed it up on Arcane, and we messed it up on Squid Games. Let's try and be faster with Halo. And then we pushed it three days because we were going to film this Friday. <laughs> that is, but, yep. Okay, so we have two different perspectives. I have played the Halo games since the beginning. I've co-opted all of them. I follow the lore pretty closely. Uh, in the sense of following the wiki, what's going on in the novels and the comic books. I'm a big Halo fan. It was one of the first, I mean, as many people, one of the first big games that I got into with the multiplayer aspect. Yep. Uh, Dan, what is your like relation to Halo? Uh, same. I've actually, uh, Halo was my very first Xbox game. I literally bought an Xbox to play Halo. Uh, played all the Halo games. I have read the Halo Fall of Reach novel. Uh, very good read. I actually really enjoyed that. And I read half of the Flood one. Okay, so uh, we're a lot closer than I thought. But we are Halo yes, fans. I although you haven't played Infinite yet, right? The new one? I have not played Infinite. I actually... I haven't played uh, some of the more recent ones. I think my last one was uh, Reach, actually. So quite a while ago, an okay. older one. So yeah. I, I'm up more up to date with the current stuff. He's more on the past stuff that everyone loves and most people played. Yeah. So let's just kick it off right here. I'm not going to go through what happens in the episode because the episode is basically Big Spartan. Well, you know what? Here's your recap. Big Spartan fight against the Covenant. Uh, saves the one survivor, gets it on his ship, it unlocks memories. He realizes that he has been altered and changed to become a Spartan. He's flying home, flips the switch, decides he's going to go back. He also reveals his face immediately in this first episode. Yeah. Uh, nice. And that's it. So that's pretty much what happened. It was a lot of setup and a lot of like building up the lore of the universe, which I did appreciate because this is not going to follow the games. They have said that way, way early. And it's a good thing because they didn't play the games or I was like, talk say, about the games. <laughs> they did not play and they did not look at any of it, apparently. Yeah, they adamantly said that. Why would you say that? But whatever. Okay. Like, I'm fine if they didn't, Dan. I am fine if they didn't because you can still make a good product from the generalized lore, and it does detach you from the game experience. Mm -hmm. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, that's... I don't think that entices people in the way you might think. Like... <laughs> oh, that's like, Dan, I'm going to make you a pizza tonight, but I have no idea what a pizza is. <laughs> but I looked it up on Wiki, so I got the white I, bread, I, I got salami, and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So... But what why don't, you, what why don't you go first what do you what do you like dislike what do you think about it so honestly i enjoyed it i thought it was actually pretty good but my biggest complaint was the cg in the spartan battle at the front it doesn't feel right it feels off it feels like and honestly the best way to describe it is it feels like the spartans were cg for people and not big suits of armor like they are wearing. Like right. there wasn't as much like impact as you would kind of expect. There wasn't as much like a little bit more stiff because even though it is very flexible and stuff like that, it's not flexible to the point of just a human body. Um, it, it, it felt weird because they it felt like really, really good cosplay. Yes. But you're right. Because they're hitting CG enemies, they're hitting the Covenant. The CG and the Covenant did not look good, in my opinion. There was a weird gloss on top of them. They yeah. always looked like they were not actually there. Like, you could yeah, tell they... what the CG guys were. Definitely. And so then them trying to show impact with these heavy suits of armor just wasn't there because he's, like, hitting and he's shooting. And it was weird. It felt weird. The CG is my biggest complaint. It just felt off. 
That and I'm not sure about you. I wasn't a big fan when they swapped to the HUD in like his helmet. And you could tell they were going for the game, which is ironic because you didn't read the game or play the games or watch the games. But they they did it at such odd times yeah. that it was kind of like, are, are you just trying to show us what they're seeing? Are you like, what's going on I, here? Because it feels off. I liked the idea of that going to that cinematography approach of like, okay, here's what the game looks. But so many things have done that better at this point. Mm-hmm. Like Hardcore Henry, if you haven't seen that, the entire movie is in a first person shooter style angle. Oh, interesting. And it's all done so much better. And I would have preferred, instead of doing the awkward kind of cuts, which is what they did, instead that they had done like, here's a segment of him normal, and then here's a, a like a whole three minute segment of that. Mm-hmm. Showing you how that looks. Because you're right, they were doing it to show off the game and make it look like the game, but it was such quick cuts, it just felt jarring to go to that camera angle. Yeah. Especially just like out of the blue, too. Like it it would have been different if it's like later on after they kind of explain what the helmets do and that they show this kind of stuff. Yeah. But it was just like all of a sudden in the middle of the battle, hey, here's here's ten seconds of what he's seeing in the HUD and Yeah. Uh, also, they're picking a different time period. This is the Rebel era before the Covenant had kind of overrun and became the big focus of the uh, the Marines and stuff like that. Yeah. I It's an interesting choice to go in this era because it is an era that we don't know that much fully about that's not in the North. Like, it's more in the lore of the books and the comics and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it felt really weird and awkward to open on the Rebel camp like that. And I think they spent almost like 10 minutes following the kids going off and then the Covenant showing up. It was just, it felt weird. Like it was trying way too hard to be like, oh, space rebels. Like, right. It seemed like a big, it seemed like the main purpose was just to go, hey, people don't like the Marines. But fun fact, you can do that in like five minutes too. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, the whole point, I think, was to try to set up this mythical, legendary appearance of the Spartans, yeah. which I've seen done in a lot of different types of media, where they're like, oh, the character, we're going to go, they're mythical, they're legendary, they're insane, these are the stories, and then they show up and they kind of go into that, but it was such a hard focus from, like, here's the rebels, and here's all the important people on the rebels, and they all dead, we've killed them all. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, like, that's, it, that was my biggest complaint with that scene, is it, it's it felt off. Yeah. And the, all I, the CG I, felt off. It just yeah. felt off. It felt like they weren't there. Like, and I know it's the point of CG, but the point of CG is to meld it to the point that we, we believe that a covenant soldier could be real. That yeah. the Spartans actually moving like that. It's like, I don't know why the budget was kind of cut at that stuff. Um, the other big thing that is hitting it, cause the story goes in an interesting de- deviation from the halo plot where master chief already doesn't trust Halsey and everyone else. Uh, because he's getting these memories back. Not against that. That could be a different way to tell the story. But the fact that he removes his helmet, I, how did you feel about that? Because the games have never done that. Now, we have seen John as a kid. We have seen him in the comics without his helmet as a kid. They've mm-hmm. never shown modern-day John 117 without his helmet, as far as I can remember. We've seen the behind the helmet. Oh, it's coming off, and then it cuts away and things like right. that. But they didn't just do a cameo. They showed it. And then he just left it off the rest of the show. Yeah. And that made the, that made the suit look even weirder because now his head's small. <laughs> yes. No, 100%. It's, it's very small. Uh, I, I felt weird about that as well because I feel like that's one of those moments that you really want to build up to. Like yeah. maybe like it, it would have, in my opinion, been better if he had like taken it off and maybe since he's apparently, it, I mean, he's smart enough to mess with a ship. I kind of thought he was going to take it off tinker with it so that they couldn't like monitor the helmet and then put it back on right but i i definitely thought it was kind of weird that they showed they showed him directly i think the main purpose was to really show it was a person and i get that and i get the humanizing thing because you want to show that he's not a cyborg right away yeah so he takes the helmet off for that human moment where he's like shoot me this is where you got to shoot me if you think you're actually going to get away but i want to help you i get that why didn't he then tinker with it and put it back on yeah. Because it reminds me of Mandalorian. Like, Mandalorian did a great reveal of Din's face. And they didn't... Ex- yes. They didn't hide it, hide it, but it was a big deal to wear the helmet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and then eventually we got the reveal of what he actually looks like, and then they made it a big deal that he wasn't wearing the helmet when he didn't. 
And that was a whole story plot thing. And he didn't have to go that crazy with Master Chief. But Master Chief is known for the suit of armor. That's what he is known for. Yeah. To take it off and then leave it off for half the episode, that's what I found weird. I get wanting to show he's not a cyborg. He's not. He's, he's a little bit more human than you thought. We got to show what's underneath the helmet. Right. I just don't know why they left it off. Yeah. Like <laughs> uh, That was, yeah. It definitely felt very off that they did that. But uh, another another part of the episode, if I may move on to a little bit, yep. was the Dr. Halsey. I actually thought that actress did a fantastic job because I did read The Fall of Reach and a lot of what's going on is actually very, very close to that novel. Yep. Like, like all of that stuff. They did change his like origin a little bit, but that doctor really, really has nailed that role that I felt like I was reading the novel again, but I definitely was not a big fan of this new alteration to the Cortana. Yeah, that it's a human clone. And yeah. you can, and I don't know if you've seen, they've shown the screens of what she looks like. They showed like one image, I think, or like one little bit of her sitting in the chair. Yeah, see, no, here's what, it looks even worse when she gets to the actual thing. So here's what she's going to look like when she's AI. That's not an AI. That's a blue person. <laughs> That's a clone, which is what they're kind of going for. Um, I did like the portrayal of Halsey because Halsey is kind of like, yes, she works in the military. Yes, she created these Spartans, but she's also very much got her own goals and her own objectives that she's doing her own thing. Yeah. Um, so I liked that they kind of met, kept with that. Um, I also liked a lot of the politics they were getting into. Like there is more to this than just Master Chief running through killing Covenant troops. Yeah. I liked that, that we set to see that. Um, I did find it weird that we have a human in charge of the Covenant. I don't see the point in that. Because the covenant is supposed yeah, to be one hundred percent against the humans, <laughs> and then we got this one human who's in a high position, and like what? Like at first, I was like, "Oh, it must be like some mutated version of a human, or like yeah. maybe the covenant has bred their own or cloned their own or something." I and thought it, that I thought it was just going to be one of the covenant races that they were going to invent, but it would be humanoid. Yeah. To save on the budget. Like, that's what I thought. I was like, oh, okay, we're going to do a humanoid kind of mo a person so that at time we don't always need to pay crazy CG because obviously you don't have a lot of money for your CG because it looks like ass. So let's have some people <laughs> that you can put some realistic effects on. Which we'll apparently $10 million an episode somehow can't afford good CG. But yeah. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then they specifically stated, no, your people. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. So you're just, you're just going to do that, huh? We're just going to have humans on the covenant. I hope That's, we have a real good reason behind this because it goes against everything in the books, the comics, and every, like, it doesn't make sense. Literally, it's like the main thing behind the covenant is that it, they don't trust humans in any way. In any way, yeah. Like, <laughs> um, I am at the point where I do want to see what's going to happen next. I want to watch this show to the ending. I can't at this point tell if this is going to be one of those like, it's so bad, it's good. It's so bad, don't watch it. Or if it's going to turn into this masterpiece. I don't know mm -hmm. yet. What I'm, in the right I'm in the same boat. I actually, I enjoyed it enough that I'm like, I want to see the next episode. Yeah. Because like, I mean, I'm going to keep uh, touching on it. I was a massive fan of The Fall of Reach as well as the Reach game. And so seeing it in a show form, just it's really, really fun. But I'm not a big fan of how they have changed the history of how she got the different Spartans and stuff. Because in the novel, she she basically treats them like her children. Yeah. And like they train like all together and they're all Spartans where they kind of imply that he's. Did they imply that all of them were Spartans or he was like the Spartan followed by people in suits of armor? <laughs> No, no, they're all Spartans. Um, okay, I don't know if they're they going to keep to this that. lore, but John is like the enhanced Spartan. Yeah. He's like one Which, of the last Spartans because he's like a, uh, a Mark II. Yeah, because in the novel, he's Because like he's Reach is standard. the early Spartans. Re yeah. Reach is like soldiers who got altered. If, I, if, if, if anybody, yeah, I know there's going to be some Super it's, Halo fans got to correct me, but the guys so, in Reach are altered humans while John is bred from like he was taken as a child and raised this way. Yeah, so in the novel, uh, the way that it's done is Dr. Halsey researches all these different planets and she goes to them to recruit like the smartest, fastest, yeah, basically the most enhanced already humans because like 
the big thing with uh, John is like she flips a coin and she's like, choose head or tails. And he literally snatches it out of the air to say that it's heads because he saw it. And like all the different people are like that. And the enhancements are with the suits. Like that's like right. that's he's the a big Spartan thing. too. And I don't know what the other ones are. Yeah. Because the, the Orion project is what the original was. And it made the Spartans. Mm -hmm. But that was the ones where they had they had their DNA enhanced and stuff like that, and they had like you know parts put on. Spartan twos where they raise the children, like what you're talking about. Yeah. So I don't know if the other ones are Spartan twos or a different type of Spartan. Uh, I doubt they're going to go with. I think, you know they might go on to all of that. I hope so because it <laughs> in the books it's such a fun adventure when you see these children. In groups, because the ones like they basically put them in battle royale situations and the other applicants either get killed or they get disabled to the point that they're put behind desks and their right. enhanced intellect is used there as opposed to in the field. Because um, everything I, I, that I'm finding about this is mm -hmm. that they are all just Spartans as far as the show is concerned. OK, they're the silver team timeline. Yeah. Okay. So I mean that if they really go with that cuz I I feel like the that I just hope that they keep in the training stuff and all of that cuz I feel like that would be a really really fun backstory. Like flashback yeah. of showing them training, showing that cuz John is the one that just takes lead. He is a natural born leader and that's yeah. why they choose him for the master chief, but the the small changes are what honestly kind of frightened me like that's those are the parts where i'm like okay you, you've made a small change now and this is only the first episode so you're either gonna go way off book like i'm gonna say the original full metal alchemist how they kind yeah. of made their alternate thing and then it just went bizarre yeah or it's gonna be a small change that you're like oh okay this makes sense for what you're trying to make it's, i but, i don't know you're right i don't know what they're intending because it is kind of weird um it's, it's a lot of interesting decisions. We're not going to pay attention to the games. We're not going to focus on the games. We're going to do our own timeline. We're going to, it's just a lot of like, well, we got a guy in a cyborg suit, so we're going to throw him into a show and figure out it all later. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Who's, who is the production company behind this? Cause I feel like it could have been so easy to just translate the plot of the game into a show. Yeah. Like with minor or... alterations. Cause the original halo is basic. You could easily mi add a bunch of shit and just uh, adapt it and all kinds of stuff. I don't know why the decision to do this was done. Yeah. And like you said earlier, the completely acknowledging and telling everyone thing was also a bad decision. Cause we've seen so many, we've seen so much proof that when people don't research what it's about, you get things like Avatar The Last Airbender movie. Yeah. And I think that's what people are very hesitant about. And on top of that, you're already on one of the least known streaming platforms. Like yeah. I, because it's on Plus. Paramount Plus. Which you only have access to because I have it on Amazon because I was watching yeah. South Park. <laughs> exactly. Like I didn't, if you had not told me it was there, I would not have figured out how to find it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's a weird decision to do this like this, and of course, it's getting a lot of backlash from the super fans because I don't I don't from the non fans because the non fans are like it's kind of boring, and the super fans are like you you rest, messed it all up. Mm -hmm. So who knows? We'll see. We'll see. We're gonna do episode two. Let us know in the comments down below if you want us to do Halo Weekly though, because we both want to know our, we want to watch this. We we watch movies and TV shows all the time. We're allowed to have opinions. <laughs> we are absolutely Marvel in DC. Don't forget to check us out on a daily basis. See what's coming on over here. And you can find us right here every day. Join the absolute armada. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We'll see you next time.